very cool. So how have you managed to build a moat? Like how have you, because it's a, with prints on demand, it's, you know, when you find a successful design, it's easy for people to replicate, as you say, with the, with the sugar skulls. What, what have been the key aspects you, you've sort of built into the business to build a moat around your brand and your products? It's, to be, to be quite honest, it's, it's the back end. So we have, I believe, you know, a bulletproof back end and we're constantly trying to improve on it or evolve it. Um, but we can, because of our back end, we can, if, if, to use one of Tim Bird's uh, phrases, we can bully um, other marketers out of auctions because we've got such a high average order value. Our average order value sits at about $150. So when you have a high average order value, it allows you to spend more to acquire um, that purchase. Uh, so, you know, there's other people, they try to, they, they replicate us, um, they replicate our designs, um, they try to undercut us with price, they try to, um, you know, beat us to market with similar designs, things like that. But fundamentally, they're because they're new or because the quality of their product's inferior, um, you know, they can't compete with us in the auctions. And, and some people can, and some people do it very well, but the mm. overwhelming majority of the sort of fly-by-night people that popped up um, when we, um, you know, launched and started seeing a lot of success. I mean, we had some videos that had, you know, views in the billions, and they were just of, you know, sugar skull leggings floating around the net and or floating around Facebook. And, you know, obviously people see that, they replicate it. I mean, you can even buy our designs on AliExpress now, which is a nightmare, but, um, you know, once people realise it's not us and the quality's not there, they're not going to pay the, They're not going to pay for it. And eventually those companies are getting weeded out by, um, by Facebook as well, which is great. Um, so there's a lot of things that we can do that, um, that sort of separate us from the, from the crowd, so to speak. Um, you know, I'm just trying to think of other ways that, it's just it's, yeah. it's really solid back end from start to finish, you know. And I'll talk about this in Vegas. I don't want to sort of give away my whole talk now, but basically, if you know, Facebook isn't just you see the constant chat in all these groups. It's like, oh, how do I, you know, how do I get lower conversions? You know, how do I do this? How do I scale my Facebook ads? And it's the same. Magic the same. marketers Thank look you. at it as this magic bullet. It's the sexy thing that rather than improve their back end, they can. Use the secret hack sauce that that we that you know the marketers have figured out to to fix their business problems, and that's old. That might work in the short term, but unless you have a bulletproof backend, as you say, it's not going to last. Look, it, you you can run a business off it, but you're flipping cash. Like if all you're doing is putting up ads on Facebook and getting that acquisition, and you're never nurturing that customer, never. Um, responding to them, never listening to them, never trying to sell to them again. If all you're ever doing is putting an ad in front of them, trying to get them to make a one-off purchase, well, eventually that, that strategy is going to, to die off. Um, your sales are going to suffer. You're not building a real business because, you know, part of a real business is the back end and the assets that you hold in that back end. Um, if you're constantly just paying for traffic to come into your website, you're just flipping cash is basically what you're doing. And the problem that you have there as well is that as soon as you turn those ads off, you've got no money. I know with confidence that we can turn our ads off and we'll still be profitable. Because of those repeat consumers, because of the engagement you have. Yeah. Like, back. yeah. Yeah. Like I know that if I decided to turn my ads off, if I wanted to send an email to my list to promote a special offer, I know that they'll respond. It resonates with them because we've treated them like real people for the last couple of years. We haven't just taken their money, sent them a piece of junk and then said, see you later, we're going to go find another customer. So yeah. we've got we've got some customers now that we've probably got about a dozen customers that have spent between fifteen and $20,000 over the last two years with us. Now, that's I don't even know myself what you would do with that amount of leggings, but they buy them and they use it. So, they you know. All at once. And, and really layer up for those cold, cold. <laughs> Never gets that cold here. But you know what I mean? Like that's and that's something that you know these other brands don't understand. So and I, I use that that iceberg analogy that you know you can and people are very critical of me for telling them you know for coming out publicly and saying that you know 
we are gear bunch and this is you know this is how we run things but and they're like aren't you worried about people are going to copy you and they're going to rip you off and they're going to undercut you and i'm like well yeah they can they can do all that but they can only see what they can see so what they can see is just that little tip of the iceberg which is the online component they can't see the back end they don't see what our staff do day to day they don't see the size of our email list they don't see the size of our custom audiences they don't see the size of our remarketing audiences that we have on google or what we do on youtube or, you know you can you can see only a certain part and you're either going to have to have a lot of money to compete with us because we spent a lot of money over a long time building those assets you're not just going to be able to do it you know overnight so look it is what it is um and if we were if we were constantly worried about what other people were doing, then you know we would we do our own heads in because um, you know we can only improve on what we do and we can only control what we can control. Um, there are a couple of exceptions to that, but fundamentally that's what we do. We just keep pushing ourselves further instead of wasting negative energy on others. And you understand that you've yet, like you say, you've built this whole infrastructure so that even though someone may be ripping you off or doing something that's detrimental to your business in the short term, uh, in the long term, you're going to be able to outlast them and outperform them and and, and also just retain your, your consumers. So uh, yeah, and that's it's pretty cool. It's got to be frustrating. It's got to be frustrating.